Look, I'm just a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. We're yeah. just going right for it. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hey. Uh, welcome to the Geology Final Cast. Yeah, it's let's Monday welcome. night. We are recording. Thanks, we got thanks for tuning special, in. We got another special guest here in the, uh, in the Flannel Cast Studios, Mr. Tim Davis. Why don't you say hello to the world, Mr. Tim Davis? Hey, everyone. I'm Tim Davis. Uh, hey! <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that about wraps it up. All right. Good show, everybody. Good show. Good show. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Thanks. Thank you very much. It was grand. All right. Now on to the real podcast. <laughs> Where are we bad now, Tim? With the real guest. <laughs> um, well, Tim, do you want to start off uh, saying, saying a few words about yourself? What do yeah, you do? Who are, where are you? you from? What, what's, yeah, your, what's your zodiac sign? <laughs> start from day one. All right. Well, I was, when I was a wee lad, uh, and then fast forward, I'm an instructor at Temple University um in in the earth and environmental science department uh i've been a uh an instructor for five years now and um before that i was uh i was a student and before that i was in advertising and marketing so just a little background about who i am but underlying uh everything is is dinosaurs like that's that's what gets me out of bed in the morning and i think that's what we're doing today <laughs> You tell no. us, Tim. <laughs> Actually, yeah. totally different. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> strontium in soil. Yeah, we're yeah. doing isotopes. Sorry. Oxygen. <laughs> what, what do you know about oxygen <laughs> isotopes? <laughs> they exist. <laughs> Go topes. <laughs> technically, technically, they're for real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dinosaurs. When did you get interested in dinosaurs? For me, it's one of those things that's it's always been around. I, I can't think of a like a, of a moment, but um, in elementary school, I was like like sort of the go to for dinosaur facts. Like, you know, this is elementary school, so obviously it's all like, what's the biggest dinosaur? Like, I don't know, like a brontosaurus. Um, but I was always into dinosaurs, um, and I would toil over these picture books and, and coloring books and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, you know, as you get older, <clears throat> as you get older, you start to lose the little, like, dinosaurs were kids. Yeah, your dreams um, get crushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you get knocked out of peg. Yeah, um, stupid so adulthood. If, yeah, yeah. And, and you got to be cool, too. Dinosaurs aren't cool. So. Um, Said no one ever. Yeah, yeah I disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Even well, I, I mean, I don't like, I don't really care too much for dinosaurs, but they're cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but to like wrap your life around them. Like at the time, I was more concerned about other things, like more important issues. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I ended up going to school for advertising and graphic design. Making some um, bad decisions. Making bad decisions. I mean, that's, that's a long chunk of time to not get back. Um, no, come senior, on. Do you really think you didn't <laughs> learn anything? Uh, have you seen the disasters poster outside of our office? Like it's yeah. that's that's me. That's still get still got it. Does a lot of design work for the department. <laughs> um, and uh, my my senior year of college, I, I took a class called dinosaurs. And that class, like you know, prior to this, I didn't realize dinosaurs were a thing, something you could actually study. Um, I thought it was like all just done. And you would, you just read about them. The work is done. There's nothing else to do. Then I took the class, dinosaurs, and it it changed everything. Like it it opened up this world that I just wasn't like I wasn't privy to. Like I wasn't aware that there was this other thing. So my senior year, I was I actually went and talked to the instructor. Like, what does it mean to like be a paleontologist and you know, he, he gave me the whole, you know, the whole spiel, but it was also my senior year. So I can't go and tell my parents like, Hey, I'm going to put three more years into this. Yeah. Um, so I graduated, went into advertising and I hated it. It was, it was awful. It, it wasn't, uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, 
what is that super popular television show? Mad Men? Mad Men. It wasn't Mad Men. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no. No. I mean, I worked at a couple of places, one small place in New Jersey, another place in uh Doylestown. <clears throat> and both of them were were smaller, more quaint, um, sort of boutique shops. If you wanted to work at some of those mad men type places, it's a different different lifestyle there. They like, it's it's interesting like how it relates to like mad men like it's different but not terribly so yeah but you know it, it is interesting that colleges you know uh, I, I'll, I'll i teach a class once a year uh that's like a gen ed science class for non-science majors and you know i'd like to think that i affect some of these students and some of them think like wow i've never knew that about yeah. volcanoes or hurricanes or something like that and it is nice that college forces you you know kind of jams it down your throat hey i know you want to be a dance major and all you want to do is dance but you have to take some of these other classes to kind of round you out as a human being and then actually some of these you know things it, end up being like life-altering decisions yeah and it, it kind of it drives me a little crazy like that's that's ultimately the purpose of like these general education classes um that we teach to non-majors and you know there are classes within this program that are it's just like busy work or you know maybe not as interesting it could be and i think it it gives maybe a bad name to some of these sometimes students have one bad experience and so they just write off a lot of these it's their senior year i just need to graduate i'm tuning out and and my i'm always like no just this is going to be interesting. I promise I'm going to make this interesting. And then on the opposite end, and, and maybe we should talk about this in different podcasts, a uh, different day, but with Tim's experience, I've definitely had students <clears throat> who've come up to me and, and said like, this is really interesting. Like, you know, I, and I really like this. I wish I would have learned about this uh, before my senior year. Anyway, yeah. I got to go graduate. Yeah. Bye. yeah I've had that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but okay. So now, now you're in advertising. How did you become an instructor in earth and environmental science? <laughs> no, leave everyone um, guessing. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so, so when I was in advertising, <clears throat> it's, I mean, I was also what, single at the time and living in, in, in like South Jersey where it's, it's where it like started where I didn't have any friends. Like, like I lived in Harrisburg. I grew up in Harrisburg and then I moved away from all my friends and then into South Jersey. Oh, um, sounds awful. It's, it's like, yeah, it was, it was bad. It was, it was hard when you don't have like a network of friends to sort of have a dialogue with. Um, so I would just go home and read books about dinosaurs. I'd, I'd go to the library, not the library, uh, go to the bookstore and buy books. Uh, you know, buy books and I would, I would toil over them and, and uh, I would just learn some things like throughout the, you know, my, my downtime, which was a lot. Um, and eventually it just, I realized like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do this for the next you know 30 plus years or whatever it is. Um, so at 29, I decided to go back to school and that's, what was it? 2000, 2008. That's when I went back to school and I haven't left. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty firm believer in, it's, you know, it's tough to give this advice, especially the current state of the world. But if you don't like what you're doing, you know, you should find a way to change it. Because if you're unhappy, you know, you, and it's, it's easy for me to say, and it comes from a position of privilege, but, you know, and, but I am a firm believer in like, you don't need to, like Tim's in advertising. He does not like advertising. How am I going to change this? No, but uh, yeah. Uh, just be aware too that like sometimes if your life is in a crappy situation, everything's going to seem crappy. So mm-hmm. you may not actually hate your job. You may yeah. just, not be in a good situation. Are you saying Tim should go back to advertising? 
That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I just like I, I know some people who like, oh, I hate my job. I hate my life. Like the, everything sucks. And then, well, and yeah. then they, I, they do uproot their lives and then they go to school for another six years or something. And then they're like, oh, I hate this job too. And I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, okay, well, now this is like your third job, yeah. your third career. And you yeah. Hate them all. yeah, maybe, you know, think about. <clears throat> Yeah, think about you got to separate the job from what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So no, because I, you know, I'm a geologist. I I had a job in consulting. I really liked it for a while, and but it was it is high stress. So I, you know, I switched that high paying, high stress job for a, a slightly, much slightly less paying job. But I'm still a geologist. So like my quality of life went up significantly without having to, you know, change my whole career and, and re go to school and stuff like that. But, you know, congrats to Tim, man, that, that takes yeah. some, them, some real, uh, yeah. cojones. I, mean, I don't know what else the word is. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was 29 at the time, like going back to school at 29 is. Yeah. Well, I was, yeah, I was still in school. <laughs> 29 so i yeah. i got yeah. no room to talk there uh, steve what was, what junior year was that for you yeah you exactly 29? that was my third junior year i think when i was 29 yeah i was also going to go to uh, montana that's where i was going to move i just you know i was going back to school i was already doing something that was um gutsy so let's move to another state too while we're at it i'm gonna go for it i'm doing it yeah and then i chickened out on half of those things hey hey and, all the more benefit to the the tri-state region. Yeah. Here, here <laughs> we are. Wins. Here we are today. Well, I guess so to segue to the next segment, uh, <laughs> Tim, are you aware of this? We, didn't really, we totally skipped over the important thing for Tim. Well, yeah. the second most important thing. Um, Tim, are you aware of the new, uh, the new segment we do on the show called Jesse's Corner? I am aware. Yeah, I like it. Um, you need a good theme song. Oh, we've, oh been, we've been working wow. on it. Yeah, yeah. I heard so you guys hit it on last yeah, week. Just, yeah, yeah. We yeah, got. We also like have to figure a, out how to how to play the theme song and record it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Chris has been working on one apparently, and my current TA Ted. Shout out, uh, Ted. That's week two. Wait, two straight weeks of shout outs for Ted. Yeah, he came. He gave me a ditty. I have a ditty. Uh, oh. So now it's just a, it's now it's a a one-on-one -on -one battle unless there's you, anyone else out there do you have your phone on you jesse can you like play it into the microphone oh yeah this is this and is while we're while we're jesse's pulling that quality. up on his phone and we're giving shout outs my brother made that shirt oh yeah, yeah so and i'm wearing flannel too for those for the, for the people that can't that are listening to the podcast steve has a geology flannel cast t-shirt <laughs> on yeah and and Finally. but if you really want to know then you got to go to youtube and look at yeah. youtube <laughs> all right here we go let's see if you know all right welcome to jesse's corner yeah that sounds like an old nokia ringtone <laughs> yeah. I, I swear it sounds he said he can expand on it if we really wanted, so. anyway all right so jesse's We're corner. working on it yeah i'm excited hey, to Jesse. hear chris's yes Yes, go on. <laughs> Why is today so important, Jesse? What well, anniversary do we have today? Well, it's the one week anniversary of last week's podcast, of course. Yeah, it is. That's, 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 <laughs> that's, important. that's what uh, I was getting at. I think this is the most consistent we've ever been, right? Yes. This is like four in a row. This is I, th pretty, I think this is absolutely time the most for like a four ever. year break. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the. This is the 40th anniversary today, this morning, of the eruption of Mount St. Helens, mm -hmm. which was a notable event in, in our Earth. Now, everybody, raise your hand if you were alive when Mount St. Helens erupted. Oh, mm -hmm. just Tim and I. Just oh. two, two out of four here. So. I was a wee lad of one year and 363 days old. Yeah. Your your brother was soon to be born. Yeah, my my mother said that uh, she thinks Mount St. Helens made my brother be born prematurely, which uh, you know 
I'm on the fence about that one. <laughs> <at best>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, Chris, my brother, again, the one who made the shirt. Thanks, Chris. Uh, he, he was born prematurely, but, you know, he was, he was the, the baby, the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as the baby of the family, there was nothing wrong with that. <laughs> position of yeah just nothing but love um <laughs> so yes mount, mount st helens erupted 40 years ago uh before we started i shared some pictures that i found um i guess we'll post them up on the old website um oh they, they, those are wild pictures yeah pretty cool so, uh we could put them we could i could retweet that on the on the twitter oh, account yeah. Check the old... what's what's our twitter account chris at geo flannel cast awesome check us out follow us yeah um so jesse before before we started jesse was showing this picture of a hiker up in the cascades on was it mount Bay, uh adams? mount adams yeah mount adams so, so hmm. hikers at the summit of mount adams and this person's watching mount st helens explode and then in the second picture below it you see him basically sitting on his butt and knocked him on his butt the the um the the shockwave coming oh. from the explosion of the volcano and oh. Oh. <laughs> that is he's crazy little, yeah it's his picture he's just a i mean i, I assume the hiker was okay uh but or at least his uh, camera was <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean uh, and we're talking to film baby film <laughs> yeah mount adams yeah. Is, is what 25 i think 25 miles Jesus. or so mm -hmm. so it's 25 miles away ish <clears throat> from the eruption of Mount St. Helens. And that shockwave was so strong that it knocked him on his butt. Like that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Not, I forget where is, where is, uh, I'm sorry, Mount Adams. It's to Relative. the right. It's, it's to just the east. To the, to the right. right. <laughs> to the right. To the, for those science people listening, it's to the east. <laughs> the, uh, Mount St. Helens was north, like pretty darn close to north. Right. And so that's a, Pretty impressive shockwave to be. We, I, I assume the shockwave. Not he, the picture, back to back pictures. He's on his butt. So the the emotional stress of it all. I just fainted and yeah. maybe maybe. Ah. Um. <laughs> so it's like thing, seeing a double rainbow. Yeah, that guy just died this week. Yeah, he just died. I heard yeah, about that. Yeah, it's a yeah. shame. He was he was a good apparently good people. So he was. All right, sorry, I digress. Um. Yes. <laughs> Enough First time ever on this podcast. <laughs> Enough remembrance is back to me. Uh, no, it's, it's, <laughs> this is Jesse's corner. It's literally the only time I demand attention. Otherwise, if you watch YouTube, it's just me like staring off for an hour. <laughs> sky. Um, so, um, I I probably should have found more fun facts about Mount St. Helens. There, there's a a bunch that we could go on. We could have a whole episode. Maybe we should have done that. All right. Probably uh, who, should have done the whole episode. Who's, who's Tim, the host later, of, you're canceled. Yeah, kicked him <laughs> off. <laughs> Emergency broadcast. Um, no, so uh, I was just reading a story and we'll, we'll obviously post the link again. It, it was, um, I'll post the link. There's a good, it's a, a good sort of pop sci article from Nat Geo. Um, and it, it talks about, so if you ever look at the mountain, uh, the volcanoes in the, in the Cascades, um, they, they all basically run north to south. They're parallel basically with the coastline. And that's because they're all formed from Um, you know, as they do of the overland and cause parts of it to melt. So, um, so the thing that I never realized until I started reading this was that if you ever look at that, Mount St. Helens actually is offset from, from that chain of volcanoes. It, it, you know, if you look at, say, say uh, Mount Rainier and Mount Hood and Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens actually sits a little bit to the west. It's, it's like an outlier. And so there was a lot of question of, of why A, it did that, and why B, it's volcanic if it's not sitting, you know, in line with the other ones. Because if you're in line with the other ones, you're at, you know, the, 
the the plate subducting needs to get a, to a certain depth before mm -hmm. you dewater and degas and heat up the overlying crust enough well, to melt. Could it be that that magma plume is just kind of following a, a path of least resistance that made it offset a little bit? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no. <laughs> so the, do, you, do you have the answer? Why it's well, offset? Well, the, the current. So this was this is this is breaking today. This story came out, and I they probably you know held it to do it on the 40th anniversary. I'm sure. Uh -huh. um, it's it's mag it's the magma plume that that basically feeds Mount Ad Mount Adams because Mount Adams is basically due east of Mount St Helens, where the other mm -hmm. volcanoes you know they're they're either north or south, and so it's the same magma plume, but there's a um, large batholith that forms. So there's like a slug. So a batholith is just magma that's cooled and hardened. And so this, this, it's called the Spirit, the Spirit Lake. Um, if you're familiar with the region, Spirit Lake up there, the Spirit Lake Batholith is this large, they think, um, basically slug of magma that started making its way up, up the plume that feeds Mount Adams, and it started solidifying, and it basically cut the plume in half. And so now some of the plume goes to the east, and some of the plume goes mm. to the west. Hmm. So I guess technically a path of least resistance. <clears throat> Even so refused, Chris was right. I refuse to admit that. So he ridiculed <laughs> me, even though <laughs> I need to break you down before I build you back up. <laughs> is that why the the frequency of Mount St. Helens is so much greater than Adams? Oh gosh, you're asking the good questions here. Uh, that is um, to so far sort of unknown. That's the next thing to look at is why Mount St. Helens seems to be. Um, a little bit more explosive and a little bit more frequent in terms of its eruption. There's some thought about that maybe the Spirit Lake Batholith is is sort of semi-solid. Angled in a way or something? I, I'm not necessarily sure about angles. The team looking at it though, <clears throat> so one thing about it is, you know, Mount St. Helens, because it's further to the west, the, the subducting plate is shallower. And so that was part of the question. Um, it, you know, if it's shallower, it shouldn't be hot enough to melt. It's the plate under Mount St. Helens is only 42 miles, where under Mount Adams it's 62 miles, which is the right depth. And so people are always like, "Oh, why? If it's not, you know, that that um, if it's not not that deep, it shouldn't be melting there." And so now that sort of explains that. Um, <clears throat> The team looking at it right now has a great name. And so it's called um, the, uh, I'm trying to, trying to find the name right now. It's the Mount St. Helens. Uh, basically the acronym is I mush. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's mag, it's, it's magma under Mount St. Helens. I mush. Which, nice. <laughs> I feel like half of half of doing research is coming up with sweet acronyms. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Jesse, so, we have a question from our Patreon, real quick, if yeah. you wouldn't mind. Why no. did it erupt sideways? Um, <clears throat> that's not a question I'm equipped to answer right now. I'd have to look into it. That's a great question, though. So. I, well, I got the answer. So I was just going to say it. Everyone else does. Let me just, I want to so, sign off. Forget it. I, <laughs> I'm going to answer this, but Jesse's going to tell me I'm wrong until I finish. And then he's going to say, oh, I guess you're, guess you're pretty, kind of right. Pretty excited to um, do that, quite frankly. Well, so what ended up happening was as, the, as that magma was coming up. So you have Mount St. Helens is the magma plume underneath. That's like the fuel for the volcano. And it started pushing to, to one side a little bit. And, you know, this magma, it, it, the magma is really hot. So the rock starts expanding. And so one side, because it was offset, it, was, it wasn't going completely right up the middle because it was offset. There was a bulge on, I believe it was the north face of north. St. Helens. Yep, north side. It was the north face, yeah. Um, and so, and it just started to bulge out a little bit on that side. 
And the closer, and the more we go towards the side, the more it starts to bulge and bulge and bulge. And so as this magma plume's moving, it starts, it, it's setting off small earthquakes. I think like on an order of like, like a 4.0 or, you know, st stuff like that, maybe 5.0 earthquakes. And um, so what ended up happening was one of the earthquakes uh, set off this giant landslide uh, just because of that bulge sticking out, the ground was unstable and the earthquake was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. And what ended up happening was uh, you had, it was at the time, it was the largest recorded landslide in human history, like ever recorded uh, of the North face of St. Helens falling, literally falling off. And you can see there's YouTube videos of this. They've, uh, they've yeah. stitched. Uh, the time-lapse is really cool. Footage. Yeah. yeah. The time-lapse yeah, is just they, like, they, whoop, they, whoop, like the whole side of the mountain kind of <laughs> falls mm -hmm. down and then the whole side of the mountain kind of explodes sideways. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so what actually ends up happening is a lot of people don't realize this, but inside magma, there's a lot of dissolved gases, right? So just think like you have like a bottle of Coke, right? And you shake this thing up and then all of a sudden you, you twist the top off and what happens? That, that bottle of Coke explodes, right? Because there's carbon dioxide dissolved in, in that bottle of soda, right? So let's go back to the magma. The magma's got all of this carbon dioxide dissolved in it, right? So now the largest landslide that human, humans have ever recorded happens, right? You take off a lot of, a lot of weight, a lot of overburden. You essentially you pop the top. Cap out. Yeah. Yeah. And now because there's no more, there's no more pressure pushing down that magma, all of the gases come out. It kind of fizzes out. And that's what actually caused that explosion coming out laterally. So it was a, it was a mix of, was mostly just the landslide that the bulge was kind of coming off the side of the volcano. Um, earthquake caused a giant landslide. You take away all the pressure and boom, you get this yeah. giant lateral blast. Now, just imagine and, like if, you know, you're a scientist, you think, okay, the cap's coming off the top. This is what's going to happen. All these geologists think, okay, this is what's going to happen. And then out of nowhere, the cap, so to speak, is now on the side of the mountain that nobody was expecting. <clears throat> So instead well, yeah. of opening a soda from the top, you're opening the soda from the side and it's kind of shot sideways. Wasn't it the, the like there was uh, like sort of a high viscosity like plug at the top and that's it just it's finding the path of least resistance. The mag was moving up, but there's that really dense plug. It just yeah, goes out the side. In this case, it went out the north side. Mm hmm. Um, <clears throat> did you like those pictures you were talking about those cascading pictures? That guy, you know, they had that like uh, I, I forget how like, the fifty mile radius around Mount St. Helens is all blocked off. Um, but you know, because we're Americans, we we don't do smart things. America, uh, yeah. So this this guy was able to get in um, to his cabin, and those pictures that you were seeing is somebody who just he was just gawking at a volcano. Um, so he hey, went. What in do you think that is? <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah, so that's that's like those, the, and it's also why it starts halfway through is because I, I think it woke him up from a nap or he was inside, he just wasn't paying attention at the moment, and then he heard all that noise, and that's when he ran outside with his camera. Yeah, um, um, yeah we should meant like, <clears throat> so when you think of volcanoes on Earth, uh, you know, you, you think of maybe Hawaii, the difference here is the reason there's so many gases building up is because <clears throat> these magmas form at lower temperatures, it makes them much more uh, viscous, so they, they mm -hmm. move slower, so they build up a lot more pressure. And they also form at lower temperatures because they're forming What's, closer to the surface. And there's also a lot of silica in there too. Yeah, because you're, you're melting that, overlying continental rock. A lot of volatile content. Yeah, volatile yep. content. So you, you have... You have the subducting plate dewaters and degasses, which gives it a lot of CO2 and gives it a lot of water. And that actually lowers the melting point of continental rock. Because continental rock at that depth, that 62 miles, is deep enough to melt. I mean, it's hot enough to melt, but it doesn't because of pressure. But if you add water and you add gas, it actually lowers the melting point. And so that's why you get melt under subduction zones but it turns out to be deadly melt. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. 
I think that should be the title of today's podcast, Deadly Melt. Deadly Melt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's all an interesting story. Uh, just reading through this, and we'll, we'll post it, I just realized the one seismologist who worked on it, uh, I was with her at Rutgers. She is a, a colleague of mine. Um, so oh, how about that? Should've, Small should've, world. Should've, yeah, reached out to her for a comment. Yeah, riddle me this. She's a seismologist. She could tell us where the magma chambers are and, and Very cool. what they're doing. Yeah, pretty cool. She's at the University of Hawaii now. Yes, but uh, mm. fun fact, our Patreon actually told me today, I didn't know this, the first person to die from Mount St. Helens was a geologist. He was out in the field covering for another geologist who had mm. taken the day off. We we're, always, we we're always given... Yeah, it's very giving profession. And I, you know, and I, I said like that that is really sad, but you know, as a geologist, and this guy was probably a volcanologist, I'm assuming, you know, you know, you, you know, you want to live to a ripe old age, but if you had to pick a way to go. Uh I feel like there's a line from Dante's Peak about that. Like, oh yeah, yeah when the one spoiler alert. The, <laughs> yeah, there's a Dante, lot of lines Dante's from Dante's Peak, Dante's Peak from 1980, 98 or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> when the main, when the head, classic. Yeah, when the head guy dies, Harry. Uh, the other, the other geologists are like, at least got to see. yeah, at least you got to see the show. And, and yeah. I'm always like, that's that's no consolation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what yeah, gets me? Horror. He <laughs> could have <laughs> jumped yeah. in a bridge that was already breaking and flooded. He, he could have jumped. Come on, <laughs> he could have made it. I don't, he, why did they all stay in the van? Like, just get out I and know. run. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. spoiler. Yeah. Alert. Why did they? Yeah. Why did they even bring the van? Like, like I, yeah. there, there's two SUVs or uh, two Humvees. Yes. And everybody's in the Humvees, and then Paul's like, "No, nah, take the van. <laughs> I'll take this two-wheel drive, rear-wheel van." <laughs> well, do you? They had all the equipment, and do you know the paperwork? That yeah, would be, and oh, the cost that's, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, it's a good it's point. It's worth dying. <laughs> yeah, your department head comes after your head for. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Sorry. Yes. No. 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 It's it's an interest. It's Mount Saint. I mean, yeah, Mount Saint Helens. I feel like Mount Saint Helens growing up in the 80s and 90s was was a very it was something that we just all kind of thought about um or it was talked about a lot more and now i in class i mentioned mount st helens and i get nothing it was 40 yeah. years ago it's you know th that was another thing when i was in advertising huh eh? um here we go yeah, bring full, it, bring full, full circle uh there was a it was like the early live streams went like the early aughts 2000 like five ish like they were predicting Mount St. Helens to erupt again, and they had like live feed of it. Um, I remember just having that on when I was at work, just just letting it play, and it was doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, in it, but yeah. I watched it. No, the the lava dome. I I definitely remember it. It was um, two thousand. I want to say two thousand four, two thousand six, somewhere around <laughs> there, where the lava dome started growing again. Because um, uh -huh. I remember I was I was still an undergrad at Penn State, and it was a big deal because here's here's my full circle, not really, but here's my my story about Mount St. Helens. When I was an undergrad, there was a volcanologist there, and he the lure was so he had an office know, on the third floor, and his, his light was always on, but I never saw him in the five and a half years I did my undergrad. Uh, uh, but his light was always on. Show off. And you could oh yeah. It was, it was purely because I was just learning too much. Um his light was always on and you'd always pass by and you know, on the door and, and said like volcanologist or something awesome. Um but his name his name was his name was Barry Voigt and the the story, you know, he was one of the early people who who studied Mount St. Helens and, and kind of predicted what was gonna happen and said like here's here's kind of what's going to happen and that was like the lore like barry voigt was one of the early voices predicting when and how it was going to erupt not like he's not like a crank he's a very well respected scientist like but he was an early voice but it's funny because in my five and a half six years there i i never once saw him um but he was always in just working but he was uh he was retired at this point he's emeritus so he's also the brother of actor john voigt 
Get out of town. Yep, there we are. You just made that up, didn't you? Nope. Nope. True story. <laughs> I tell nothing but truths. Or this is John Boyd's car. <laughs> I tell did, nothing, did nothing you, but truths. <laughs> did you like what is the like how far in advance did he predict? Like you can look at any volcano and be like, no yeah, it's going to erupt. No idea. No, no clue. Uh, I remember for like our, our Christmas party we had, <clears> the grad <throat> students were like, <clears throat> they were making a video to show, and I was I was there like studying late or something. <clears throat> it was when or, I, or something or something. No, it was literally it's it's when I was trying to write the ship, and uh, I was like, I gotta graduate, and so mm-hmm. I was studying a lot. And I remember like walking down the hall, and there's a bunch of grad students in their office, and they were like. Uh, they were watching like baseball drinking beers and I, I walked by I was like what baseball game you're watching just trying to get a beer uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, we started they gave me a beer and we started talking and they were like filming this video and they're like what do you know about Barry Voigt and I was like I heard he predicted Mount St. Helens and they're like that's what we want to hear and they like started filming me they're like tell us all about <laughs> it and they're like and I was just like I heard he predicted Mount St. Helens it's and they're like, that's the story, but no one knows the actual story. So anyhow, no, no answer to you. I don't know. I'm sure I could look it up or talk to people, but I don't want to do either of those things. I just like, <laughs> sometimes the myth is better. The legend is better yeah. than the truth. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So some fun facts, some other fun facts about Mount St. Helens, the, uh, the, uh, the lava dome has grown grown a thousand feet according to the usgs uh it's grown a thousand feet since the 1980 eruption uh so it's still actively growing so do you that's, leading up that's a lot <laughs> well in the weeks leading in the weeks leading up to <clears throat> the may eruption it was active for about two months like march and that was part of the problem like i think it started like releasing gas and ash and they evacuated everyone and then it mm-hmm. didn't do anything for like a month and they well, yeah, it. that's. <laughs> but yeah. in the in the weeks leading up to it, the lava dome was growing <clears throat> six to ten feet a day. Wow! Wow! Which is kind of crazy. When that's, I read that, I was like, "That's that's that's a human. It's growing as tall as a human. That's, so that's one, quick." One of the tricky things is when you're trying to predict when these things are going to happen. Is you know you don't want to have like a, a you don't want to say it's going to erupt and then have it not go off. There's, you know, like, like Jesse said, you know, people get, people start getting frustrated. You know, you, you tell them to evacuate their house. Like that's, that's a big deal. You know, you want to make sure that you're absolutely certain that the eruption or whatever natural disaster is going to happen is go, actually going to happen. You don't want to, because then, you know, people leave their house and then, you know, it doesn't go off and then say, ah, you know, they're wrong. You know, but like how many times has like the weatherman or weather person, I should say, uh, has predicted like a blizzard. You know, especially living in Philadelphia, you know, we you get snowstorms all the time. You know, they predict the, the storm of the century, the storm of the century, and you get like flurries, and it's just like ah, you know, ah. you you lose your faith in, in that that person. Now, obviously, the comparison between a blizzard and a exploding volcano is completely different, but that's the one thing you gotta like. It's really hard for these people that are in, um, like uh, you know, like the governors and uh, these these people that are in these political positions to. You know, you really want to, when you pull the trigger on that evacuation notice, you want, you have to make sure that it's, you know, it's going to erupt. But volcanoes are so tricky because we know like it's active, you know, we can tell that, you know, are, are there, is the volcano bulging? We can measure the, that, you know, are there earthquakes going off and all that stuff is, you know, it's the literalist, you know, it, you can literally see this, this volcano getting ready to erupt, but we still, we're not at that point yet where we can say like, oh, it's going to erupt in like, you know, two to three weeks. Yeah. You know, so it, it's one of those things like, you know, it, you know, it, it'd be nice if we could just like say, Hey, it's the possibility is there just, be smart, do smart things. You're going to be safe. But people get angry with that. Like they want science to be like perfect. Like there's no yeah. wiggle room in, in science. It's just perfect. And that's how it is. And yeah. if it doesn't happen, science doesn't work. Then, then that's, I mean, <clears throat> we see that now when we talk about climate, like, because people want black and white <clears throat> and scientists are hesitant because they know things are, you know, there's probabilities there's so involved. So many variables, yeah. 
Yes, oh, yeah. this is what's going to happen. When exactly is it going to happen? Well, here's the range, and here's the yeah. probability of that range. Like, and nobody wants uh, to hear that. No, yeah. and, because the minute, and the the other side is like the minute you say, "Oh, here's what it's going to be," and if it's not like that, then you're wrong forever. Yeah, I did see a meme the other day. It, it says, uh, "Oh, to all those epidemiologists out there, we feel you." Sign the climate scientists. <laughs> well that's i mean we so in our uh, one of the classes we teach about natural disasters at temple we show um it's a general education class for non non-science majors so we show hollywood clips from hollywood movies and, and then show talk about the real science behind it and so we actually one of the things we show dante's peak a lot that's how i knew not, not that it's not my favorite movie. Oh, I was just gonna come say, on, it's, you it's watch still, it every week. It's still an awesome <laughs> it's movie. But carry it on. Is, like I show, I show it in class, and then like I, I've seen it so many times that so, like I know the nuances and like just how they talk to each other. And I'm looking for people for reaction. And there's nothing. Everyone's on their phone. No one is. It's awful. Yeah. I'm like oh, they look around the room. Like, isn't this incredible? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a line that gets me every time. Uh, so it's when they they first get to town. The, the town is Dante's Peak in, in Washington State, it's a fictional town, <clears throat> and um, but they film it in Wyoming, in um, some little town in Wyoming, and one of the things, this is uh, sort of off topic a little bit, uh, one of the things is the, the motel owner is like, we were just named the, the, the second best city in the country, population under 20,000, and Pierce Brosnan's like, oh, what was number one? And he goes, I don't know, some piece of crap town in Wyoming. <laughs> the joke is that they're filming in Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, it just gets me every time. And I'm like, <laughs> let me set this up for you. Yeah. No one, no one cares. But anyway, no. uh, we also, <laughs> to, the movie is based a lot off, there's a, a Nova special about Mount Pinatubo. And there's, it's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great documentary because it, it just goes minute by minute. They get in like as the volcano starts like rumbling before it erupts and they make a point of saying like if we raise the alert to level two where we evacuate people they're going to expect it to erupt in 48 hours and if it doesn't erupt in 48 hours they're coming back they're coming back like people will yeah. be upset and come back so it's kind of crazy um, yeah it was it, it was i you know and it, it's interesting to read their like journal entries and stuff how stressful it was for those scientists to be like no nothing's going to happen yeah. And then, you know, yeah, there's a lot it, of responsibility on it. It's not yeah. just, you know, well, there's those know. Italian geologists who yeah. got it wrong. Five, five of them. And they got sent to jail. Yeah. Like how, how, you know, they, they said, Oh yeah, you know, this is just normal seismicity. Nothing to worry about here. Nothing to see here. And then, you know, the volcano erupted or no, it was an earthquake. Was an earthquake. Sorry. <laughs> earthquake. <laughs> Uh, yeah. heard. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> no, but you know, these scientists were there to predict something. They said, oh, you know, the risk is low. And then an earthquake happened. And then they sent those scientists to jail. <laughs> and uh, whether that's right or not is, is maybe they. I, 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 again, I, I, I haven't looked into the finer details of the case. Like, I don't know if they were yeah, grossly negligent. Like they just showed up and drank all day and didn't do anything. Or did they actually like. I did seven works of field work in Italy. And if I could go back, it, I would in a heartbeat. It was great. <laughs> I said, oh man. It was, it was just. And I was, I mean, yeah, I was, I was up in the North where it's seismically active, but no volcanoes. So, I don't want that in my life. According, about, about those Italian scientists, uh, according to Wikipedia, <laughs> uh, there were six, sci <laughs> six scientists and one ex-government official were convicted of multiple charges of manslaughter. Or they're convicted of manslaughter for downplaying the likelihood of a major earthquake six days before it took place. They were each sentenced to six years imprisonment, but the verdict was overturned. Yeah, it's, you can't. And there's... No, but they they were like they took them to trial. They charged them. They yeah. Yeah. convicted them. Like uh, people, when people were angry, people were angry. weren't yeah. like weren't they like fully acquitted in like 2014? Like it's really recent. Yeah, that, yeah. It, it took a long it time for 2014. Them to get yeah. yeah, it took them two years. When yeah. was the yeah the earthquake was 2012. Uh, the uh, earthquake was uh, in 2012. Where was Aqua? What was the name was, of the Aqua? Where's La Laquila. La Laquila. La Laquila. La 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 
Like, yeah. All of our Italian listeners. Uh, I do, while we're on the topic of uh, cultures, shout out to uh, our listeners in Ireland. Um, we got a lot of fans in Ireland. Uh, keep up the good work. We are the 12th most popular natural science podcast. It in was, Ireland. yeah, 24th. Don't get ahead of yourself. No, anyway, right. count the chickens. Listen, I'm already counting the chickens. Uh, of but the all first the geologic foreign countries I've been to, <laughs> Ireland is one of them. <laughs> I've been to Ireland and Northern Ireland. Hey, I've never been, but as soon as uh, the quarantine ends, it'll be the first place I go as long as you get us in the top. Top five. Get us yeah, top five. come on. Keep listening. Tell, tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, tell your friends. Spread the word. <laughs> and that goes for any other country. You get us yes. in the top five, I'm there. Uh, whether you like, whether you want me there or not. <laughs> exactly. We're showing up. <laughs> so, so this is Jesse's Corner still? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I like it. It's, it's this, more of Jesse's quadrangle at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Special Much. anniversary edition. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, 140. We'll come back 10 years from now for the 50th anniversary <laughs> of St. Helens. <laughs> I, Jesse I, will still be talking. I, I had a second story. Oh, but I want to save it for next time. All right. All right. We, we've just gone on just go. Long. At this no, point, just no. go with it. Just no, go. T- it's Tim. not about Mount St. Helens. So. Tim, so what is your favorite dinosaur? Oh. Stegosaurus. Yeah, Stegosaurus all day long. Yeah. All day long. Why Stegosaurus? Why is that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I wish I could go back in time and just like figure it out. But you know, there were a lot of people that wanted like uh, a T Rex or Velociraptor or you know, Triceratops. But Stegosaurus was just kind of cool. I like the idea. Which for me, one? like I like. Lo- Which is Stegosaurus? Like the pointy ass. Had the fins on its back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not fins, but yeah, the the, the plates. <laughs> Just and then like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no fins. <laughs> uh, and the spikes on the tail and like the small head. Um, actually, like going back to like my story in the beginning, when I took that dinosaur's class, day one, um, the instructor wanted to take every student's picture, which is weird in hindsight, in retrospect. Like, that's yeah, a little strange. <laughs> I had a teacher. Mm. I had a teacher do that, yeah, but same. he said he needed he needed it to know where everyone sat, so yes. he memorized names. <laughs> same. Yeah. Uh, I don't now, know. in retrospect, I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I, I needed either. to see the. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to say <laughs> so, something inappropriate, but I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> yeah. I. Why yeah, do I have to so take anyway. my shirt off, sir? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like for me, like when I was when I was a kid, like I loved the Stegosaurus and I would read all about them. But like I only had so many books. Like it was the same stuff in every book. Like, all right, yeah, great. Moving on. Um, but you know, this was this was coming out of that like time where I was sort of dismissing dinosaurs as being like anything possible to my future. Um, so that day, that first day of class, like. I was excited. Now, this is, this is supposed to be an easy A. It's a really super easy class. Day one of that class, the instructor wanted us to, to pose with a bone. Like a, it was this, it turns out it was a skull. Uh, yeah, I had to say some bone. is not right. <laughs> what is this? What is bone? <laughs> <laughs> um, Please so, clarify. <laughs> no, it was a popular course. It was a lecture, lecture hall. So, um, Everybody is, is passing this skull to the next person, and like I'm, I'm a cool kid, so I'm sitting in the back. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was like one of the last people to go. The whole time, I'm, I never really got a good look at it until it was passed to me. When the skull was passed to me, like I realized what I was holding was actually a Stegosaurus skull. Um, now it was also a replica, but me at the time, I didn't that didn't register with me, but like it was a stegosaurus skull. And that was like, that was actually a moment for me when I realized my life was no longer in advertising. (laughs) It was, it was in this. Um, Yeah. So, so that's really what like the whole catalyst to everything. But like, Oh God, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Like stegosaurus is just weird. Like he's got like relative to the body size, like his head is small. Is there, um, is there other, dino, like, I feel like with dinosaurs, they all got, like, relatives. Is there any other dinosaurs that are, look like stegosauruses? Oh, they yeah. All got, we all have relatives, you know, <laughs> yeah. family. Yeah, um, there's, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't name drop, but 
um, yeah, there's like, yeah, there's a lot of relatives, like ankylosaurs from that same. Uh, oh, that's the one with the big ball group. tail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, notosaurs. Like, um, a couple of years ago, there was a really well preserved notosaur, um, like sort of an outwash channel, like into the ocean. Hmm. Like, All right, now, now I'm going to show my ignorance here, but isn't it something crazy like stegosaurus is closely more closely related to uh no we're more closely related to tyrannosaurus rex than tyrannosaurus rex is uh, uh, i think what so, you're talking about is geologic time yes like, geologic we're, time yes. We're, like our, yeah, our yes. timeline so, time not, not yeah. more closely related i guess that's not the right way yeah to there's say. more time so, separating t-rex and stegosaurus than there is t-rex so, and us. how yeah, crazy this, is that this, like it's, it blows my mind. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I I have an I have a good working knowledge of geology or geologic time, um, but and every time I think about like how big geology or geologic time is, like it blows my mind. It really does. So the the Stegosaurus was around uh, between 150 155 million years ago. All right, the T Rex died Both out at the at the end of the uh, Cretaceous with the, the mm -hmm. Chicxulub impact, all right? So if you do, um, you figure at the, wait, what's that? Uh, yeah. uh, well, right. It's still alive. What he's saying is it's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out he's in there. It just it's crashed in a spaceship in Brazil. So, <laughs> so we don't know, we don't know, like there's any new science associated with dinosaurs is always met with like, a lot of skepticism. There, there's uh -huh. a, the, the three meters that, that separate the, the impact from when the last occurrence of a dinosaur is, which is, what, nine feet? That's, um, that's some good conversion. Yeah, I'm no nine, mathematician, nine but I think yeah. you're close. Nine, yeah. So, so it's nine feet separating, like, <gasps> a dinosaur from the impact, which means probably not the impact that killed the dinosaurs. Ooh, you're bringing yeah. up a lot, a lot of controversy yeah. right now. Yeah. I know some now, people that don't have your have your yeah. head for saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that being said, a couple of years ago, like 10, 10 years ago at this point, um, there was uh, there, there there have been some things that have that have been found closer to the uh, the the KT boundary. Um, but ten years ago, there was a ceratopsian horn. That was found like um, five inches away from the the boundary. A lot, like really close. Yeah, but was that so like they, Lazarus taxa, or is that like yeah, legit? yeah, yeah, zombie taxa? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. That's it was found like it was like a mudstone, something of that variety. Okay, and and um, just just real quick for clarity, KT point. boundary is the Cretaceous Tertiary boundary, which is yeah. essentially when the Chicks Lube impact hit 65, 66 million years ago. Yeah, um, it's that, and that Lazarus constantly changing. Yeah, and Lazarus tax it just means like it was a fossil, but then it actually got washed, like reworked and then became like redeposited in newer rock, but it's actually yeah. an old fossil. Uh, so. Like something ripped that fossil out of the ground, whether it was like a, a river or something like that, and it washed away. And right, imagine yeah. like like somebody buries time. a Model T in your backyard, <laughs> and then there's a giant flood, and that Model T gets pulled up and then redeposited. Like you wouldn't think it's that that mound model, of rust. Yeah, you wouldn't think that Model <laughs> T is from 2020. You would think it's from 1920. Yeah. So. Um. But yeah, so it's it's really interesting that that three meter problem or like whatever they call it. It seems like that that gap is narrowing. My nickname in high school was two meter problem, so because I'm about six feet tall. <laughs> it's good conversion. It's good conversion. <laughs> yeah. So, well, back to the the Stegosaurus. The time gap between the Stegosaurus and the T Rex was eighty five million years. Mm -hmm. T Rex. The Stegosaurus died off one hundred fifty million years ago. And the T Rex sixty five, so you get 80, 85 million years, and then well, yeah, and we are eight sixty five million year difference. Sixty six. Sixty six. We we were just, just rounding. Yeah, sixty five, sixty six. What you know the 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 you know we're all friends here. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> um, <laughs> I you know I I feel like they they just did um 
they just revised the the Big Bang. Um, I heard, I saw that. I didn't read into that, but I saw that. Yes. So it's 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 thirteen point seven nine nine plus or minus point zero two one billion. So that's the number. I'm still teaching thirteen point seven five. It's just easier to remember. (laughs) Oh, you know, do thirteen point eight if you're doing anything. Come on. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Fine. It's seven thirteen thirteen point seven nine nine. Yeah. Plus or minus twenty one million. They've got a plus or minus twenty one million years on air right now. That's according to, um, gosh, I don't know. What. But twenty one million years plus or minus twenty one million years. That's plus or minus <laughs> like, you know, that's a huge margin of error. Yeah, I mean, but I guess like thirteen billion. Yeah, thirteen yeah. billion. Yeah. billion. <laughs> no, on. no, I get it, but you know, that's yeah, yeah. I yeah, no, I I agree. I just think. I'm just thinking if they can get the whole universe down to plus or minus 21 million, we could, we could figure out the dinosaurs for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. That well, three feet. So uh, three meters, the see. number, the, the number I'm looking at that I get from the good folks at Rutgers, 66.05 million. That's the number that I, I don't quote Rutgers, but 66 no, is yeah. what I'm, what I'm, I, I typically refer to, but then like, I hear people that are more knowledgeable than me say 65 and i'm like i don't i don't know it, the problem was so, it was it was 65 for a long time and then it was 66 at least in in my remembering of memorizing the geologic time scale and then it went back to 65 for like yeah. a hot minute and then it went back up to 66 so it's like okay it was 65 forever and then it was 66 and then it went back to 65 but now it's 66 yeah so. we should we should talk about geologic time one of these days i feel like it's we, it's an interesting we did a whole po- we've done that before yeah, we did a whole episode do, do it again if, if they're remaking all the movies five years after they came out we could remake it that's podcast. true this will be like spider-man mm-hmm. 4 or something yeah 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 <laughs> plus we have better audio equipment <laughs> I heard, I saw they're remaking video games now. They're remaking the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater games now. Oh. I don't know how I feel about that, but anyways, that um, has nothing to do with what we're talking about. The rest of do you guys have a favorite dinosaur? Uh, there was a dinosaur recently discovered. Uh, the game your favorite? No, it, no, it's not my favorite, but it had an <laughs> awesome name. It was from the the guy over at uh, Rowan. Oh, Titanus or um, it was like the uh, Dreadnought or like Dreadnoughtosaurus. Dreadnoughtosaurus. Yeah, Dreadnoughtosaurus. yeah I was like Patagonia. That's a, Patagonia. Yeah, that's it's not. A, it's no longer the biggest though, right? No, but mm. it was just a. It was just a. You know. Well, when he discovered it, I thought it was. Dead. It was. It was bulkier. I think, uh, like weight wise, it's not height. It's about girth. Mm, dread now. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm more about the... Uh, Fears nothing. <laughs> it, it's funny. It's like lumber, Lumbers along. That's, that's, I yeah. can't expect that. Grow, growing up and knowing <laughs> dinosaurs, and I'm old enough where, like, you know, I was a T-Rex fan and a Brontosaurus fan, and, like, it, you know, there was no such thing as a Velociraptor until, you know, the early 90s. I never heard yeah. of it. Um and Brontosaurus doesn't exist anymore, right? I thought it didn't, that's, and then it did again. Th- that's the beta. I don't know. I thought it was back. I thought we we're back, yeah. baby. You know, <laughs> I, I saw this because my favorite always has been a Diplodocus, which... Is that that I, big duckbill thing? No, it's it's like the Brontosaurus, but bigger. Ah. It's not as it's like, dumb as the Brontosaurus. It's a lot smarter. <laughs> He's like had like his teeth were a little bit different, like more for oh. like strip it stripping. I don't know. Yeah, he just nibbled on trees. He's yeah, he's just yeah, it's just yeah, minding his own business, nibbled on trees. Like I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Not but then just, learning about like index fossils and like all these yeah. like my my whole world of you know, uh, paleontology and stratigraphy class at Temple University opened my mind to like what <laughs> like yeah so uh you know it's like picking one of your favorite children you really know what the answer is in your head but you're not going to say it out loud <laughs> can't say it out loud <laughs> so for for my field camp when i was an undergrad we i was we did a it was partly paleontology work and we were digging up mosasaurs in south dakota 
Mm. And, uh, that was, that was a pretty neat experience. Just like seeing, seeing that thing in the, um, you know, out in the outcrop and, and trying to pick away at, at it and get it out. Uh, they were working on, so people think that like, you're just going to get this, like this big Moses or out of the ground and like, you know, in like two weeks or whatever, but they were working on this it's thing for big. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big. I mean, and it's not like you're clearing all the matrix away. Like that's all information yeah. too. Like all of it is information. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts for every single bone we had to put like how it was aligned, which direction it was oriented. Oh yeah, and because and it was so we we're on the Missouri River and oh it was god awful. It was a like hundred degrees out and that was a day I think I started to get heat sickness. I don't, well, it wasn't like heat stroke, but it wasn't fun what it was. All right, and so you see in like the movies when you know like Jurassic Park or whatever when they're excavating these dinosaurs, they're they're covering it in plastic and everything looks like you know really romantic and it's awesome. You know. Well, that plaster is a nightmare, and it gets in your in the hair on your arms, and it just doesn't come out. It was. <laughs> that's it was that's awful. also an exothermic reaction too. The curing process of that. So this is more heat. I, I wasn't getting burnt, but it was all over me. And then I tried. Then I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is not going to be fun trying to get it off." And then. Mm-hmm. I lived. I'm gonna float down the river for a while. Yeah. I think I often I think about did that. Did not become a paleontologist, though. <laughs> I, I, I often think about that. Um, these romantic notions of, of field work, and then I think about the field work we've done, looking at like Ordovician worms <laughs> in oh, the Juniata yeah. Formation, like on the side of a highway, <laughs> which is a great yeah, field. Yeah, right? broken glass everywhere and just, were you <laughs> were you out there the one year when, when the dead deer was in the culvert <laughs> it smelled oh, so yes, yes. yeah yeah added added a little element of something to it oh, well yeah. i was i was absent the one year that tim almost chopped his thumb off oh yeah i missed that at the, mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. campsite yeah that was, that was a good year <laughs> so we got nothing done <laughs> <laughs> not a like good that's, field that's happened to multiple people multiple years yeah, we salami yeah. incident like trying to cut salami and oh, end up cutting man. a fingertip off or something or yeah that was, was that, that was a Patrick trip yeah yeah, Pat. Pat. yeah. yeah. oh good times no, so we should have a knife safety course before we knife axe if you sharp instruments yeah. I'm just gonna be doing scissors or something I was doing field work and I'm not gonna give any any details but about the this but there was a there was a person out there that came out to help us out allergic to grass and we're in a grass field and <laughs> so one pipe snapped shut anaphylactic uh, shock person had to be removed and i'm going to leave it at that <laughs> nice <laughs> oh this is, man yeah, how are you allergic to grass like no i know i know there are legit like grass allergies but like it's everywhere so i i have a minor grass allergy and like, like is it when it when it's cut like when you know nah, it doesn't if if like if i'm sitting in the grass like it just makes my like legs if my skin touches it just makes them itchy. rash it's not, it's not, a yeah. big, it's not even a rash it just makes them like itchy and it's minor yeah. it's not a big deal but like yeah it's just it's just more of a pain in the yeah i don't go into anaphylactic shock yeah. but it seems like a poor like response of my body like it is everywhere. Maybe I'm built for like above the tree line. I should be like yeah. Otzi the Ice Man. <laughs> Living in the Alps. <laughs> that, that sounds about Didn't right. Did he get clubbed to death? <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he, I think he, yeah, it was like three ways he was. Yeah, was he shot there. with an arrow or something too? Something like that. I feel yeah. like he was like, he was like Rasputin. He was like rolled in a carpet and thrown off a bridge. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he survived that and then he yeah. was shot. Yeah. Well, they didn't like the food in his belly, like show that he was like down in the foothills, like in the morning. And like he was up at like 10,000 feet at when he They died. thought that there was, someone was chasing him down and he was trying to outrun that person or whatever got him, but. He did not uh, run him. Can you? Oh man! Well, he did not run him, but did he? Because he's still around. <laughs> yeah, we Just remember saying. him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's the real winner here? Exactly. <laughs> so, just like, you know caught- what? I could fall here off to the side, or I could fall in this crevasse and get preserved for the next thirty thousand years. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say the person that didn't get glacier. clubbed to death is the hero. <laughs> I don't know. Just saying, <laughs> put me in front of a glacier. Yeah. Just let it take me. <laughs> Uh, that might take a while in this current <laughs> climate. Oh, yeah. 
and maybe put me behind it and <laughs> retreat over me. <laughs> That's not how glaciers works. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Um, next week we're talking about glaciers <laughs> i can't wait to learn yeah <laughs> uh well tim any uh parting notes that you want to yeah, did you uh oh, we're wrapping this up already i, well, I don't just, know no no, no right. keep on going tell, Go us, ahead, uh, tell us some, I don't tell know us some what dinosaur I'm stories about. here well, dinosaur stories i don't know did you did you read the article about the dinosaur fish no Gosh! <laughs> well, you sent it to you weeks yeah, ago. Sent it to you weeks ago. I didn't read anything. I notice. I notice now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's about a dinosaur that's a fish. Well, that's so all I got. Tell us all about uh, all you know about dinosaur, and then I'm going to come back to you with the dinosaur fish. I'm kind of yeah. Okay, you get back to me on the dinosaur. Well, <clears throat> um, let's take a minute and talk about the impact. Like, all right. So. So there was a, like last year there was a site in North Dakota that was discovered that uh, they're saying is sort of like minutes after the impact. Um, are you guys familiar with oh, this? Oh yeah, 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 the, yeah, the big death assemblage, right? Yeah, yeah, like a massive death as- de- death assemblage, and uh, the guy calls it. Enos, Enos. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, so, so that site, like, it's interesting. I really haven't heard much about it since last year. Um, like every once in a while, like you hear the same thing, but that site, like apparently has some really interesting things. Like there are fish that are impaled, like that are actually going through other fish cool. at that site. Um, there are apparently feathers preserved, which is dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, they're they're like impressions, but they're they're pretty good. Like, it's a pretty good death assemblage. Like, really, really well preserved uh, stuff. Um, it's kind of interesting that like there was a site that could possibly have recorded those minutes after or hours after like the event. Yeah, and they, there's also uh, tectites that are inside that death assemblage as well. Yeah, all those like so- glass beads raining down. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So basically, in case the, for the listeners that don't know what a tectite is, uh, when an when an impact when, a, when an asteroid slams into Earth, it essentially it melts all the soil and all all that stuff like right where the impact is, and then it rains back down to the ground and it uh, you know turns it turns back it solidifies as it's falling back down. So yeah, it's a, um, and so they they found all this all these tectites inside that um, that area, Tim, that you're talking about. So they think this thing was like within an uh, this, this whole, uh, you know, assemblage was, was, uh, put down within an hour after the meteor impact. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't understand like the fluid mechanics. There's some people that are concerned about the timing of it all. Um, <clears throat> but it's really interesting, right? Like the, the tech that's running down relative to like the water moving and apparently it's all sloshing around, like, say, sh- all sloshing around in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's really interesting seeing like these these tectites like and how far they go into that soft soil, like those those glass beads must be raining down at a pretty good clip. Now, can I play devil's advocate here? There's there's a giant impact that hit Mexico of something from outer space. Who's to say there wasn't like three or four smaller things that hit near North Dakota? right around the same time that would cause this devastation. You know what I mean? Like you have like this big massive ball of rock coming towards the planet, but there's other like yeah, parts to of say it. It wasn't something yeah, that, that either that, broke like, off or, or was coming with it out of outer space. And I don't know. Like the big, we found the big hole in the ground. No, no, no. I understand you found the big hole, but then there's a lot of, uh, essentially glaciation in the last 65 million years that would have just erased any, you know, any sort of well, crater that's, impact. That's the problem I mean, with doing, doing, uh, you know, studying impacts on the surface of the earth. You have this thing called geomorphology and you know, the surface of the earth is always changing. That's why it's, it's hard to study this kind of stuff. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. There are other, like on earth, there are like impacts that are associated with each other, but like it's an object that like in uh, 
Quebec, there's, I can't think of the name of it offhand, but there's, there's one, sorry, there's two impacts from one object. Right. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I can't there's, remember. There's one, I, one in Scandinavia, I think the twin impacts from in Scandinavia. Let me look that up. Um, dum, dum, dum. But yeah, I mean, but, I sometimes, you know, things do hit. It's not just, it's not just one, you know, one thing. Yeah. The well, I think part of the, I mean, the study was, it had a lot behind it and they, they, they had a lot <clears throat> with how you can get like a sage up a river. Um, but the, the field site, it, there was a lot of weird things where like the field site itself was very secretive and they weren't letting anyone in to look at it. Um, That's one of the weird things about paleontology is like that you'll, like it's owned, like that land is owned by somebody. And so like he just basically rented that land for exclusive rights, meaning like nobody else can go in there. Like it's not uncommon for that sort of stuff. It's weird. So I was, mean, there there are some poaching. There is some, you know, yeah. and, and there is just some like, hey, my land is now more valuable than it used to be, and I'm gonna yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make money it. off of this. Yeah. So yeah. my well, one of my Jesse's corner. For, I'll do it next week. Is about <clears throat> uh, sample preservation and reproducibility, and that's oh that one yeah. Part of the issue here is like, if no one can get in to like look at it themselves to reproduce the same results or to at least verify hey yeah then it's worthless in my opinion raises a lot of red flags if you can't reproduce it what's the point yeah and that's that's an issue we it's a big issue in geology right now in geology sort of academia it's like we have all these people go out and they sample things and they just take the samples and you know the work is good and the the work is valid and the methodology is sound but the rocks are gone the rocks are gone they hold on to the samples and it it's a question about like access and it's interesting i read an article today about that i think in the washington post about that don't spoil it don't spoil it that's all right right. you shouldn't even say anything sorry that was out now you know that that was the one jesse wanted to uh you know extrapolate but we cut him off too late, too late. You'll have to uh, tune in next week, Tim. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a teaser. This is a teaser for next yeah. week. Yeah, everyone to, tunes in. That's the only reason you tune in for Jesse's Corner. Yep. I'll have to donate to the Patreon page just to, so I can tune in next week during the live Zoom. Yeah, that, that's a good you point, can, Tim. You that's can bad mouth us point. on the Patreon. You can do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah, it's it's the whole, <laughs> and we talked about this a lot when it came out last spring um it's it's a really interesting the whole thing is very interesting you're talking about tannis yeah Yeah. trying to like tannis wasn't that from raiders of the lost it is and that's why they named it nice that is (laughs) but it like saying in it's this sort of ties in where we're talking about like 66 65 or 13.8 13.799 like we deal with such long even when we have things tightly constrained you're still talking like tens to hundreds of thousands of years and here the study is saying like nope this is 35 minutes after impact yeah that that i you know i wanted to call bs on that instantly like are you kidding me hours like i'm sorry if if you do, I guess if you do the math and you say this was covered by the water sloshing up, I, you know, no, I, I understand you can model it and say like, okay, yeah, if no, the impact happened at like noon on a Tuesday, it would take this long for it to reach North Dakota. Yeah. But I, the one thing I didn't love, like, and I guess I'm sure they, I haven't read the paper, honestly, I read it a year ago and then it was, it was sort of, had strong opinions for about a week and then it's not really my thing. So I forgot about it. Um, But like, how do you differentiate between just a really catastrophic flood event? Right. Maybe, maybe there was an ice dam. I mean, I'm sure they did. There's, I I think the thing is is there are uh, uh, saltwater fish in with freshwater fish. So you're telling me, Adam. I, 
this is how I read it. That there right. are, so I, I think the, the idea is, is that there's this wave coming and any critter that is in that wave is getting pushed into this freshwater environment. It's that far upstream. That's a thousand miles. It's a lot. But it, they had the, they had the hyd- hydraulic experts on there. So I trust. Th- that would have, like, if it's a thousand miles away and it got there in a half an hour, that's 2,000 miles an hour. Look at you, Mr. Matt. How, how is there not, Man. how are they not just obliterated into fish mush? Well, that's, that's why it's like there are fish that are actually impaled, like going through other fish. I don't know, the Cretaceous Bassomatic. <laughs> Bassmaster. It's my second favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, Ghostbusters 2 reference there for the uh, folks who yeah. got it. <laughs> Um, so awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I remember like that. No, it, the Bassomatic was from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but the Bassmasters, Bass Master, that Master, was from. Yeah. What's, your favorite? What's your first? Second Bass favorite. Master. Yeah. Oh, I know Bassmasters. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I, I it, but one of the cool things is there's, it's, it's not often where you get a, a study like this that makes you so sort of conflicted. And at least for me personally, I was like, this is really awesome. I've got a lot of conflicting opinions about it. Mm. Like, ah, it seems really cool, but, and like, I'm not a cynic. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't think it, it sort of behooves you to be a cynic. I think sometimes I trust people and that's sort of maybe a problem, but. But as a scientist, you have to, you know, I just need a little more evidence to back it up. I think, yeah, Yeah. there there were certain. Uh, yeah, there were a few red flags with the whole thing that I think it was, it's cool, but that was one of my like biggest epiphanies in college was taking a class and we're like, okay, read these papers and we're going to debate them. And I'm like, okay, well, these are obviously published journal papers, like they're gospel, right? Right. They ma- made it through the peer review process. They made it into a well-established journal and then you get there and then you end up with someone has a paper that pretty much says the opposite of what your paper says well shoot now what like and then actually critically thinking through them and being like oh well wait that doesn't really that's a giant assumption or that doesn't really make sense like it's just you know that that was one of my you know i remember that clearly thinking like wow it it makes you think like, all right, maybe you should, you know, don't take everything at face value. But at the same time, like, I don't know, you, you have to trust the people doing the things. Too. No, that that is very true. But that that also gave me clarity to think like, I remember at, you know, thinking like, oh, well, I can never really be a scientist because I could never prove everything anything 100 percent, and then reading these papers and be like oh well they don't know it 100 percent either so i you know i it is okay for me to study this stuff and present it even though like i'm like 99 percent sure but i'm not 100 percent sure because i i I try and get that across i think sometimes when i teach that like you know sometimes we we teach things and we say like you know this is why x y and z works but one of the things i always say is like <clears throat> there this is the best that we know it thus far mm-hmm. there are so many unanswered questions that we don't know <clears throat> well and, the thing is too when you're doing some of this research sometimes you're going out on a limb you're using some methods that are really you're kind of reaching you know they you know it, it points in a direction i guess you could say like uh sums up my I, career some, some, yeah some of the, <laughs> you're there but it's just not working out <laughs> really always on a limb well there's some of this some of this research you do you get you get this data and it's just open for a lot of interpretation there's a lot of wiggle room involved and you know one person can look at this data with one interpretation another person can look at the data and have a complete different interpretation so yeah i guess uh, it's just how well you pose your argument I was going to say, it exactly. poses how well you wave your arms. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, like, yeah, you, you, you need to be able to defend it. 
and if someone gets a, and you'll find this in especially in academia you see this a lot when you question someone if they get upset about it like all right maybe you've struck a nerve like if you should be able to say like mm-hmm. why did it the way you did it and, and mm-hmm. why you think it's the way it is and like i don't know you you deal a lot with uh, people with who just think they're right all the time and yes they're not no they're, they're they're doing the same thing you're doing is that they have an idea and they're using what they know to try and answer that problem whatever they're well, trying I, I think that's jesse you have a good point i think that's one of the most important things about being a good scientist is admitting when you're wrong and knowing that you will be wrong because nobody's right and we've all seen the people out there that don't ever want to admit they're wrong and you know on yeah and huge i'm perfect egos I'm perfectly willing to do that as soon as it happens. Yeah, you got it. That's <laughs> it's never happened once that I've been wrong, but I will do it. But when that day comes, I will admit it. No, I always use the example of, um, <clears throat> like, uh, uh, you know, with, with my when I was doing my PhD. By the time you, you spend a lot of time doing doing your research, you, you know, you spend years, and by the time I I got to the end, and I was like synthesizing everything and i was putting papers together to publish like a whole chapter that i did in retrospect was not correct anymore and a lot of times people will push through (laughs) push through and and (laughs) yeah well i think and like you just have to acknowledge things are wrong and you just cut it like and some people refuse i mean because it it takes a lot of it, yeah it's years it of your life from yeah it takes something from you to it, well, it, it just hurts no, just think, a lot like, it hurts. yeah I mean like for for your dissertation you basically you tried a lot of different methods and it was yeah. just like nope 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 that ain't gonna yeah. work you know it was, it was kind of and a couple of them like I had to train to do that method and so it's like mm-hmm. here's a year of training nope nope method doesn't work that ain't gonna work yeah yeah, yeah. but now it I happens. Know, now I know how to identify pollen. Yep. No, and and also <laughs> it comes, but no, but sometimes it comes down to money, funding, availability of resources. Like, uh, you know, in my master's thesis, I had to digest soil in this like crazy convoluted multi-step process that involved all kinds of hazardous chemicals where I could have died any day, and then, you know doing in doing this research i'm like wait if i had a microwave digester instead of this three-week process i could be done in 30 minutes like but i just don't have access to one or funding for one or like yeah yeah. which is the the funny thing is um the hood you worked in for your 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 grad work uh the counter off to the side now there's a microwave digester. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Irony is not lost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I got a master's out of it. Okay. Yeah, and you <laughs> you learn the ins and outs. It's not a black box. You're not pressing a button. Nope. Nope. Do you you can measure out the HF to di- digest that? Yep. Let me let's, <laughs> just for fun. Let's mix that with perchloric. Uh, see if it explodes. <laughs> yeah. It did not. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, I, I guess uh, we're running running a little late here on time. You wanna, you guys wanna wrap it up? Yeah, oh. I I just wanna I wanna throw out there the the story I read. Here, here's, here's, here's here's yeah the fish. So newly All discovered right, end of end of April end of April. So it's like a week old. Maybe that's why I I thought I sent it to you, and it turns out I did not. I looked through my emails. <laughs> I, I sent it to you in my head and that's all that really matters <laughs> so um <clears throat> discovered this uh uh fossil they're, they're dubbing it the river monster dinosaur spinosaurus and it lived in the they found it in the sahara desert so when rivers flow through 100 million years ago and it it's the first like true dinosaur they think lived in water it was a powerful swimmer. Most they thought like lived on land. Are they saying earliest or no. only first discovered? First, yeah, 
first time such an adaptation for it to actually swim and mm. live in water. 100 million years ago. So it went from water onto land and then back into water. I don't know about that, but... So um, Spinosaurus <laughs> is, the, is the guy here? That's Spinos, what you're talking about? Spinosaurus, yeah. So, fun fact, Spinosaurus, like, oh. um, he was discovered in, like, the 1930s-ish um, by some German, and uh, during raids, like, in the war, uh, the museum was destroyed, and the bones of the Spinosaurus were also destroyed. Hmm. And aside from illustrations <clears throat> of the of the bones, we have nothing. Wow. They're, huh. they're gone. Crazy. Huh. That's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah. So actually, Allison was on a an expedition. When she was getting her PhD at Penn, uh, she was over in that area trying to find another Spinosaur. No dice, but they tried. So they're saying it's, yeah, so the one they have, they, they have the tail, and they say it's, the results are fully consistent with the idea that it being truly water-dwelling, tail-propelled river monster. That's interesting. Wow. I wonder how they would be able to, just by bones, looking at it and seeing that it, because I would, I would expect they did any a sort of f- yeah. they soft did. tissue, like an impression. So, uh, But they, they were also saying it, it was sort of lunge out based on yeah. previous things that I'm aware of. So it's, but it's uh, not a fish. They made a flexible mo- model of the tail and attached it to a robotic system mimicking swimming motions. So that they, sounds... So they, made it, they made it do what they wanted it to do. Yeah, I was just going to say, like you could take a human arm and attach it to a motor and make it swim. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, published in yeah. nature, that's all I know. Oh, well. But yeah, so I, I've heard like he is probably water-dwelling. Um, you know, sort of like a crocodile now, like or sort of hangs out on the that 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 marginal area, just sort of hanging out. And then when something comes to take a drink, you reach out and grab it, just hmm. like a whale did. Like uh, what? 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 A whale? Wh- like a? <laughs> You're saying a, a whale like a di- uh, like a crocodile? Well. I, I switch gender uh, or species, but like crocodiles do that. They hang out in those like transitional environments and they oh, reach yeah. out and grab something. Whales, it's, when they were evolving, they did the same thing. Um, the the name of the whale that I'm thinking of, like it escapes me at the moment. I'll, I would always call it the walking whale. The one that had the feet. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah uh, the walking um, whale. I'll text you guys at 3 a.m. when it hits pretty, me finally. <laughs> pretty excited. But the whales, um, sorry, I know I keep interrupting. Uh, yeah, so like he was also living in uh, that transitional environment and would lunge up and, and grab stuff. Um, but I mean, it's been done before, so why wouldn't dinosaurs do it? Like birds today also live like like penguins. Like there's a couple years ago, like two years ago. No, that seems too far. Within two years, there was a dinosaur that that um, apparently had sort of like that. Um, really fine downy skin like penguins do. Um, I, I don't know how they're able to get that good of an impression, but apparently they found something that 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 sort of looks like a penguin, like a dinosaur that looks sort of like a penguin. Is that do you? So <clears throat> this is totally <laughs> like this is taking a stretch here, but like is is this are these like adaptations that led to like? Um, like the tetrapods, the dictoleak, that like the first land creatures. I guess there's nothing on land for them to go up there to grab. I, I was I, I I read an interesting thing in talking about like uh, the genetics behind it, and they're talking about how like evolution works, and you know thinking about before they become land dwellers, they actually have fully developed lungs before they actually go on to land. It's like, um, what is that James Cameron movie, The Abyss, where they, they go into the abyss and they're in that like aqua suit and they have liquid oxygen and they like teach people like when they're going down into that deep abyss, yeah. the abyss. Um, keep saying it, keep saying it. <laughs> Maybe like, James Cameron will be a Patreon. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so they were, they're in these suits and they had to... Um, 
learn how like they're, they're like you have to train your body to breathe liquid again i don't know that, that, that i don't know why that's where my mind went no i i kind of got off i was when you said about them coming up on land and and trying to grab things i was thinking like <clears throat> why did why did tetrapods develop legs to go up on land and i was like oh maybe they went up to grab stuff but no it doesn't make sense because there was nothing up there um plants yes yeah, sh- sh- uh i don't know Wor- worms sh- maybe sh- what was up there nothing there's gotta be something plants maybe plants 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 yeah. and worms maybe like tastier plants were growing up on land like i'm not getting out of the water unless um, i get something pretty something sure tasty. the chicken came before the egg i don't yeah. know yeah yeah so i don't know i just it popped up last week it was or two weeks ago, end of April, this yeah. thing about right. um, Tim, river, we'll ha- river we'll, monsters. We'll have to have you back on the show. We'll all yeah. do some research. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you again next week. Yeah. Yeah. The, like the whole idea of like dinosaur evolution is just sort of strange too. Like the early days, like when dinosaurs first showed up in like the mid Triassic, like they were probably like from a, like what they wanted to eat, they were probably really a generalist. Like, sort of I'll eat leaves, I'll eat meat, I don't care. Just that's probably what made them so successful. And like seeing these little things like sort of radiate in all like sort of directions. Like it's pretty incredible. Like the idea of, you know, all, like the, the 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 variety of weird little creatures, dinosaurs that we have, like that's really incredible. And then the idea that like flight probably evolved like a number of different times. Like these really simple things, I've had to it. Yeah. Um, like it's it's really incredible that there's there's these this radiation of creatures out there. Yeah, I, I feel like I have to uh, talk. Stop talking now. No, 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 no. no it, it is it is uh, it it hurts my head to start thinking about that. Yeah, like, uh, one of the things like <clears throat> and you think about like some of the inferences we make about like dinosaurs we have very few it's sort of like the idea with spinosaurus where like it was identified there was probably one or two different species or one or two different like sets of fossils that all just got blown up like specimens. there's v- specimens there's <laughs> there we are uh <laughs> so, uh failing dodge but like we're basing it on like small sort of sample sets like how do you define the difference between a baby dinosaur and an adult dinosaur or two different species? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that's all I have to like, say about that. Yeah. Okay, no, but, but, no yeah. it's, it's a, it's a problem. Like, you know, the, the, like ceratopsians, they're like everywhere. How do you know, like those little changes that differentiate between, yeah. you know, like a large and a small one, like, that, like they're, they're, your body goes through weird things, like it changes over your lifespan, right? Like, like just proportion wise, like like uh, small children to adults, their proportions are all different. Like their torsos are not the same length as as their limbs and things like that. Like if you were to just bury us for a hundred million years and then look at us, you might think like, oh, all these small dinosaurs. Well, how would you think about it? If you're a paleontologist, like just a theoretical thought experiment. How would you be able to link caterpillars to butterflies together? Just right. looking at it from you know a hundred million years later. Oh man, uh, do God you know, bless. Do you know the the whole thing with like when they undergo metamorphosis? Metamorphosis, yeah. Metamorphosis, <laughs> where like you you cut open the the chrysalis like it's just goo. Yeah, 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 yeah. like they, they, like they gooify. But yeah, because because their heads go in one direction and then their heads come out the other direction but there's yeah. not enough room for them to turn but like yeah but if you cut a caterpillar you can find like parts of the wing so it's like when when they're a caterpillar wait 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 really yeah there's there's uh, we can talk about I'll, I'll tell you all about it after. this is not <laughs> this is a new jesse's corner i think yeah no it's it's a really interesting like there's a speaking of unknowns in science this is one of the things where we're always just like yeah it's a caterpillar it goes into chrysalis comes out a butterfly 
it's been solved. Don't worry about it. Yeah, back in my day, they were called cocoons. There, now yeah. it's a chrysalis. <laughs> like. uh, let me tell you something. This is <laughs> personal statement. <laughs> Since we've been under quarantine, I've been at home too long. <laughs> but um, we, I, I, we got some caterpillars uh, for the kids to, to turn into butterflies. And it was awesome. They loved it. And in my living room, the, like behind the, there's a table behind our couch. And we just put the little tank with them in there. And every night, like the kids would go to bed and, and I would just be there and I'd be like on my computer doing something. When they're in their chrysalis, they make noise. Oh. And they'd be oh. right behind my head and you just hear like this like rattling or like shaking noise. And it was terrifying. It's, <laughs> it's going to be chills just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. Don't like that. Nope. Nope. Glad they're gone. <laughs> there. You know one? Yeah. Anywho. Well, yeah. Tim. Thank yeah. you so very much for coming on. You've been an excellent guest. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me, guys. This we has been appreciate fun. it. Yeah. Um, we'd like to thank all of our listeners out there. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Please visit us on YouTube. Visit us on Twitter. Go to our website, geologyflannelcast.com. If you um, if you don't already, please uh, whatever your podcast medium of choice is, subscribe to us. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Leave Check a. Us- Leave a review because that helps us with uh, visibility, and it helps us get better. Like, how can we? How can we be better? Uh, I know it's tough. No, it's, it's really hard to no, decide. No. Like, at, you know, how can you perfect I, perfection? But I can't deal with criticism at this point <laughs> in my life. Please, that's, that's, I'm fragile. Yeah, I'm se- in my chrysalis of life here. Yeah, Please. Se- send him to Seminac. <laughs> he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it, trolls. <laughs> I'm up for the challenge. I'm bored. <laughs> I, I'm also under quarantine. I have nothing to do, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Also, uh, if you want to help support the podcast, people have been asking how they can do this. Uh, you can check us out uh, on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash geology flannel cast. Um, we have a couple different tiers of membership there. Uh, you can check out some behind the scenes stuff, participate in Q and A's before the podcast and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So check us out there on Patreon. Yeah, we, are, um, we had our first Patreon uh, Q and A tonight before and we got some good questions. It was great. So yeah, you know, it's, it's something we actually enjoy doing. Yeah. At the very minimum, you'll get stickers of the deal. So <laughs> yes. Um, and and if you stick with it, maybe a t-shirt. <laughs> Stop it with the t-shirt. <laughs> false false advertising. I'm done with this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this week. <laughs> On that note, we love you guys. We will see everyone next week. Take care. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.